Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. I am already a mega fan of this show. <laughs> so oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, Paul, I'd like to start from the beginning with those mm. opening graphics and oh. the song. I love that. So Yay, thank you. I You're the first to mention that. Oh, <laughs> perfect. So I just want to know, how did the creative process go for that? Um so a terrific company named Digital Kitchen came in. They've done main titles for a whole bunch of shows that you know and love. Um, and, um, and they had multiple concepts that they pitched us, probably like 20 different versions of main titles. And one of the things that I wanted out of the main titles, one of the things we wanted, Marvel, the Marvel producers as well, was like, how do we give a, a nod to the story? And so those images are tied to story in our show. They're Easter eggs all on their own. And when we saw the childlike drawings, it was evocative of kids who've been in trauma mm. asked by therapists to, you know, draw what you saw or draw what you, you know, went through. Um, and, it, and it was indicative of the, the pain that Anna and Damon went through as kids. And there was something about that that really resonated with me when I saw those images. And they had different images at first. And so we we asked them to tailor some of those images to our story. Okay. And then um, the composers, Danny Mancini and Sandra Gerons, um, also you've heard their stuff for, they're fantastic. <laughs> uh, we, we wanted to evoke something. There was a needle drop under it at first that I don't want to give away. Um, and, and we were like, let's do something a little bit different. Can you compose something? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I sort of nudged them in the direction of the Percy Faith Orchestra I wanted something to play a little bit counter to that so that when you start the show, you go, this is something different. This is, <laughs> yes. this, is, this is not what I thought it would be. This is not the opening to a superhero show. Right. <laughs> and, and, it, and it just sets the tone in a way that, you know, hopefully gives the audience a very different viewing experience. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was a long winded answer. No, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> June. Yeah, she borders on the line of like a mother figure, but also just like teacher at the same time. So how would you describe the relationship between Dr. Hastings and Damien? Well, uh, it is. It's, it's, it's kind of a tough love, kind mm -hmm. of a mother, kind of a um, coach, life coach. Um, I think that I watch Damon and I see the good and I am always insisting on the good because mm -hmm. I know it's there and I, I know I am not technically your mother, but I expect you to do better. Yeah. And I think that it's um there is a sense of trying to hold him together and then hold uh victoria and him together and then hold him and anna together hold it all together yeah and but what's interesting is you know i hope it's okay to say this very often when a black actor is in that role mm -hmm. It's a very uh, sort of um, benign and all suffering, all welcoming, all, you know, it, it's perfection. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this show is that Louise is not perfect. And she's not that, she's not that thing that we have inherited in this culture. She is so fun and funny, but mm -hmm. also like in her way, but also like she gets it wrong. Mm. She is allowed to get it wrong. And I think that there is so, what, what I, I love getting to play somebody who is a full, fully realized human being, you know? And so, yeah, I'll take care of you. And yeah, you could have done better, but oops, did I do that? Sorry. <laughs> you know? And I just, I love her that I love her. I love her. And I love the relationships 
because they're 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 full of surprise. Yeah. I never know what I'm gonna get with any of these guys. <laughs> you know, which is like life. You yeah. literally don't know from one day to the next who you gonna get when your loved one walks in the door. Yeah, and I, what you were saying, I think Dr. Hastings is for me almost my favorite character right now because she is so full rounded makes mistakes but also loving and nurturing but also will probably smack you if you do I'll smack you if you don't get it right because I know you know what's right <laughs> I know you know <laughs> I love it so I mean I'm hearing you know family and that kind of theme and of course it's coming out in October and the spooky season it fits right in I'm curious to know what other themes or major topics will Hellstrom cover? Um, you know, thematically, we we dip into some of the old favorites. It's the nature versus nurture argument. It's fate versus free will, uh, you know, our, our morality, where it comes from, you know, that knowing the difference between right and wrong, and then knowing where our sense of right and wrong came from you know, who raised us, how we were raised, and then taking all that information that we took in when we were kids by our parental figures and going, hey, wait a minute, maybe they weren't right. <laughs> maybe some of the stuff that was imprinted our, in our brains was wrong. And taking that next step of evolving and going, okay, maybe I need to make some decisions on my own here is where the free will comes in and recognizing the sins of our past, you know? I mean, thematically, the show is about demons, figurative as well as literal on this show, you know, the figurative demons of how do we deal with fear? How do we deal with anger? How do we deal with prejudice? And, yeah. and, and what do we do to overcome those things? We have to recognize them. What do they do to us? And how do we conquer them so that they don't consume us? Because our main antagonist kind of in this show is someone who had that anger consume them to the point of throwing morality out the window mm -hmm. and the ends suddenly justify the means. And, and, you know, we don't, we don't do just simple black and white on this show. You know, everything is gray. Everybody's got to question themselves. Everybody's got a flaw. So yeah. Again, long-winded answer, sorry. No, I'm great. on the caffeine. I've got too much caffeine in me. I'll, I'll, I have time for one more question. So how does, I mean, I'm a, such a Marvel fan and comic books and whatnot. How does Hellstrom fit into the MCU, if it does at all? It uh, doesn't. Okay. We're, we're our own thing. Um, you know, we were going to build our own thing. Uh, with a cast of, we were given sort of a lot of characters. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I say a lot, I don't mean many. I mean like a, a pod of, okay. of characters. And you go, yeah, that's, that's, that's all we need. We're our own thing. Don't want to carry the baggage of all that other stuff. Like we just want to tell our story and tell it well uh, for these characters and these people. And, you know, that was the goal. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because you know, other Marvel shows, I'm thinking Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it started off that way, trying to kind of be intertwined with the MCU, but then- Very it, different situation though. I was there. Um, okay. It, it was, um, that was a very different situation. We, you know, that was the mandate. I mean, we, we inherited Agent Coulson as the lead of our show, who clearly was a gigantic part of the MCU. Mm -hmm. And so there was an obligation there. Okay. You know, here we had a fresh start. We had clean characters and, you know, meaning that they weren't, you know, appearing in other stuff. Um, so there was none of that baggage that we had to adhere to. Awesome. Well, I'm thrilled about this show and oh, cool. can't wait to watch the rest of it. And I hope, fingers crossed, there's season two. So uh, thank you for your time today and best of luck with the series. Thank Thanks you, Kat. Kat. Have a great one. You too. Take care. Bye. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.